also hit the like button. This helps in our ratings with the videos and we appreciate it. And be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grow and Pilot's YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about spark plugs. And there's a lot to spark plugs as we're going to find out. So stay tuned, and I'm sure this will spark some comments. So here we can look at an internal diagram of a Tempest spark plug, and it shows where all the parts are in the spark plug. Now let's get on to them. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk a little bit this morning about spark plugs. For most of us, we have eight in our airplane. Um, as you can see, when they come out of the aircraft, they can look pretty bad. They can look pretty good. You can't look at the condition of a spark plug and tell what's really going on. Now, you can, on the business end, if you see carbon, stuff like that, which we see on a lot of airplanes, you also can see that um, there'll be some lead buildup inside the plug. We're going to talk about all those things. One of the first things we do with a spark plug is we want to see, first off, we have to get it out of the aircraft. So to remove a spark plug from an airplane, you'll need two tools. I actually need two, you need three. Seven sixteenths and a three quarter. These two are used for going on top of the B nut on the lead, and then you break the spark plug loose. By doing it this way and securing this to keep this from moving, you won't tear up your harness. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Growing Pilots YouTube channel, directly supporting the Growing Pilots Association. And our topic this morning is ignition harnesses. One of the items on our annual inspection checklist is inspect the harness. Well, if we look at this end of the harness, we can see it's okay. The cigarette butts are showing a little bit of arcing. That's what these little black specks are. But that's not the real reason for rejecting this harness. We look down here at the end and we see that somebody has been turning the end off without using a 7 16 wrench on the B-nut and it just twins and twists and tears the outer jacket and the uh, inner jacket is not in much better shape. But the reason this harness gets rejected is because of the number one spark plug lead and as you can see here the insulator has completely separated from its housing. It was arcing all on the top of the spark plug so we put a new harness on this morning and uh, so again take a good look at your harnesses be sure to use these B-nuts when you put your spark plugs tightening them in and out and uh, keep your harnesses in good shape so you won't be having stray arcing right here. You do the same thing when you go to reinstall it. You simply lock that nut and then tighten this snugly. And now you've reinstalled your lead. This is our lead off of our tester. So this goes over here. The other tool you'll need is a spark plug tool. And these are available from Aircraft Sprues, Aircraft Tool Supply. But Grumman owners being frugal, let me use that word instead of the other obvious word, there's a lot of other options you can use. This is a spark plug tool from Aircraft Tool Supply. You can also go to Harbor Freight and for $2.95 get a 7 8 inch oxygen sensor. It does the same thing. And there's another version of this too that you can use, but this works out well. Now, one of the first things we do when we take a spark plug out of a cylinder, before we do any more work in it, we want to check its resistance. Now, we do so many spark plugs here, you can actually just use an ohmmeter, but we actually have the specialized tool from Tempest, and we put this on a spark plug. And what we're measuring is the value of the resistor built into the spark plug. And when they go bad, they go bad. We used to be able to change them. And here's just a quick diagram of it. But they're made now that you can't change them anymore. And the little LED goes green. That tells us the resistance in the spark plug is below 3,000 ohms. If it goes red, green, red, green, red, green, it's 3,000 to 5,000. And anything over 5,000 is rejected. Here's a couple of plugs that we rejected. They were actually thrown in the trash. No good. Again, verifying no good. So if you do a lot of plugs, this test is really nice. If not, you can simply use an ohm meter and you want to go from the center electrode inside to the little um, the little tab inside where your spark plug lead hits. You want to measure the resistance through the plug and the resistance and the resistor inside. Now inside of that, you'll see a little screw cap in the champions. You'll see a spring, which it pushes down upon, and then let's see if I actually have one left, and a resistor. With Champions, and they've had some quality control issues in the past, and they may still be, I've, I've switched over in the shop two years ago to Tempest. The, um, the resistors on a good plug that's worn on the electrodes, well, we can harvest a good resistor and save a, a, a plug that has good electrodes, but the resistor is bad. The resistance is too high in the plug. 
And if the resistance is over 5,000 ohms, and believe me, we pulled plugs out at 30,000, one meg. Uh, when they're doing that, they're arcing here on the lead inside the barrel, or worst case scenario, they're arcing on the other end back inside the magneto, trashing the mag for you. You can inspect the spark plug. Again, if you do a lot of plugs, you'll want a really neat tool. This is a magnifying glass. allows you to come in and very accurately look at your plug and see what's going on. Let's see. Okay, now, now that you've got your plugs out, you ought want to check the gap. They've checked it good for resistance. The first thing we're going to do is go put them in a bead blaster, um, a spark plug cleaner. We're going to clean them. Uh, then we're going to pick out all the lead. We're going to clean them one more time to make sure we've got it all done. Or we can manually clean the lead. Lead's very hard, and a bead blaster, sand blaster, is not going to get the lead out. So what you have is a little vibratory tool here. goes into the plug slides in the side, vibrates all it, and then you dump all the lead out, then you go back to the cleaner. After you've done the cleaner, you hit them with air, and then as a final clean, we dip them in 100 low lead, FAA approved cleaning solvent, let them dry, and then we'll check the gap in our lawn. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and we're going to talk about the two ways that you clean a spark plug. First thing we're going to do, is you can see this one's pretty carboned up, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to bead blast it and remove all the carbon off of it. We're using a blasting cabinet. As you can see, we got it nice and clean, and now we can see all the lead in there. Let's remove that lead. Now we take the spark plug and the vibratory tool. And when we're done, out comes this little pile of lead. We've gotten all the lead out of the plug. Now we'll go gap it and get this plug ready to go back in the air pack. You want your gap to be about 16 thousandths. Champion sells this little tool, so does Tempest. It has a bunch of little different wire gauges on it. But you optimum is about 16 thousandths. If your gap is too big, which plugs do erode and get larger as they go on, well then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have some sort of gap adjusting tool. This is a really nice one. Um, it just very accurately can do it. A little hand one is just as fine. You back out the two um, screws and then they just screw onto the end of the spark plug and then you can adjust your gap exactly where you want it. You will get a little bit of a spring back so don't get carried away with these because once you get the gap too much you really can't ungap it unless you go out and you get the specialized tool for increasing the gap. And that's a very expensive little tool from Tempest. Also, too, they sell a go, no go uh, spark plug gauge. When they get so rounded that that drops over the plug, just goes right down and sits here, well, then this plug, it's time to be rejected. And what that tool really measures is how oval the football has gotten. And when it gets to a certain point, it's no longer really good as a spark plug anymore in time to be replaced. This plug is still good even though the resistor is bad. So these go back in the trash. If you have a bad plug, well, sometimes your threads inside your cylinder, which has a helicoil in it, can get a little messed up. You can get a thread chaser. And a thread chaser is nothing more than uh, a set of screws that match the threads on the spark plug. And it has a couple of slots to pick up debris. This is also the 14 millimeter for the experimentals or cars, and this is the 18 millimeter for um, aircraft. Now, if you have a plug that tests bad, and by the way, this is a, a plug, you want to make sure that if you have a plug that has tested bad, then what you can do is you can take a die grinder, and on this case we put three slots in the side of the plug, and the resistor and all is out of it, but we've made a thread chaser out of an old spark plug. So you can just take one of your old spark plugs, die grind three slots, two slots, four slots, whatever you like. Now you've got a thread chaser for your aircraft. So you can save yourself from buying a tool, you can actually make one. And then when you go to put the, tool back, uh, the spark plug back in, be sure to get a new copper gasket or anneal the old one. And good morning ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to show you here is how to anneal your spark plug copper gaskets. So we put them on a piece of safety wire. 
uh, separate them a little bit. Then we heat them up and then we're going to bung them in cold water. Bung them in the cold water after you've gotten them cherry red. What this does, it takes out all the stress cracks in the copper gasket, so you can use them for one more cycle. Or you can buy new ones. They're about 45 to 50 cents each. Uh, but then again, Grumman owners being frugal, uh, there you go. Ready to go back on the airplane. Pretty nice looking when you get them all through the process. And now you can go put them back on the uh, spark plugs and put them in the engine. Put some anti-seize on the thread. Stick it back in the cylinder and again tighten the harness up just like we talked about. It's a lot easier when it's in the airplane. Wrench and then snug. And now I'll take it back off. So that is the basics of spark plugs for our engine. All of these that I've shown you here are massive electrodes, 40Es, 3080s. There's also the 37BYs, which are the long reach plugs. So we're just going to take a quick look at how far the spark plugs via borescope insert into the cylinder. So we're going to be comparing the 40E versus the 37BY, and then again the 37BY versus the fine wire plug. So enjoy looking at how the spark plugs look from inside the cylinder via a borescope. Uh, whichever plug you use, they do require proper service. When you change your oil every 25 hours, that's a good time to pull your plugs, clean them, check their gap, and rotate them. It's a pain in the butt, I know. We're going to show you how to properly rotate your spark plugs for a four-cylinder light combing engine. You'll notice that we have all the top plugs here, cylinder one, two, three, and four, and the bottom plugs. They've all been cleaned. They've all been gapped. Uh, the only one that's going to get rejected is this one, but we'll leave it in for demonstration purposes. And now let's do the rotation. One top, four bottom are swapped. The diagonals are topped. Two inside are topped. Swapped. And these are swapped. And there we have swapped all the plugs. Let's put them back in their original position. That's all it is to swap. Next thing we want to show is how to prepare your plugs for painting. Uh, putting a good coat of uh, engine enamel on them uh, gives them some color and also protects them from rusting. Some of these look like they're in pretty bad shape. So we'll roll lock them and clean them and then we'll shoot them with primer and then color. Both high temperature, but what you need to do is you need to come along and protect the threads. You don't want any paint getting inside the spark plug. So you just fold it over and now it goes into the painting rack. Here, I'll show it to you again. This is just a wooden board, uh, two by six, that we have um, that we've drilled the proper size holes in for the spark plug, and go ahead and get them all ready for painting. And then we'll come back and show you what they look like after painting. Okay, now we've wire brushed them all down on a rotary wheel on our on our grinder. They're all nice and clean. They've all been washed with lacquer thinner to remove any oil, and now they're ready for high temperature fake chrome paint and that's what we're going to do now. They look pretty good but they'll rust right up in the harsh environment under a cowling that most airplane spark plugs see. So now we're going to go throw some paint on them and we'll be right back. Okay here they are all painted in fake chrome which is high temperature uh, aluminum. So they're nice and shiny and silver again. We'll let them cure overnight and then they'll be ready to go back in an airplane. But it's good practice and it keeps your airplane running at tip top efficiency. One of the numbers that Lycoming likes to throw out is that your ignition system accounts for 11% of your horsepower. So a weak ignition 
will give you minimal, having a good strong ignition, like an electronic ignition is even better, but for Magneto, 11% difference in power based upon the spark plug and the wave fronts that the burning plasma pushes the piston down with. Electronic ignitions are a whole different issue. Well, here we go. We're looking at some red spark plugs. You'll notice they're attached to some red lines. We've just installed the electronic ignition in this Tiger. Now, the spark plugs are EAREM37BY, or I'm sorry, 37HE high energy for the uh, 70,000 volt uh, electronic ignition spark plugs. They are different from the, you know, UREM37BYs that are Tempest that are gapped at 16,000. And they look very similar. And so to prevent mechanics from making a mistake when they work on this engine, what we've done is we've painted the bottom spark plugs red to match the red lines. We left the top spark plugs silver, and they go on silver lines. And just to make sure, we've added a placard to the firewall. Let me see if I can get in there. And it, the placard basically reads, mag plugs on top, EIS bottom, and they are red, so that you won't make a mistake. The magneto cannot fire a 39,000 gap spark plug. Electronic ignition will destroy a 16,000 regular mass electrode spark plug and even a 37 by spark plug. Uh, ask Mark Matthews and I how we know that. But anyway, this is just a little tip. If you're doing electronic ignitions, it's probably a good idea since the plugs look alike and are different to put the mags on the top and let the electronic ignition fire fire the bottom plugs, which are the dirty the dirtiest place to fire in the cylinder. Uh, I'll touch briefly on that real quickly. We are installing more and more electronic ignitions, better fuel economy, easier start, smoother operation, less lead fouling, because where the magneto puts out a 12,000 volt spark, um, okay, that sounds like a big number, until you say like, ooh, electronic ignition, 70,000 volts. Now, we ran a little experiment here one night with our first electronic ignition system. We took the plugs out of all the cylinders. We put the plugs on the engine with ground leads so we had them all grounded and then we pulled the prop through by hand when the mech, when the when the impulse couple went off we saw a little blue green spark go tick across the electrode it was pink and blue lasted maybe a millisecond it was just very quick when we did the electronic ignition what we saw was a quarter second blue pipe cleaner hanging up <laughs> big and fat at 70,000 volts so that's the difference between the two. That's why electronic ignitions are becoming so much more popular to replace one mag on our aircraft. Uh, the numbers that we have with electronic ignitions on Tigers is that you'll save between anywhere between three quarters and a gallon an hour in fuel burning at the same power, same fuel settings, again, getting smoother operation. So here's another look at the difference between a massive Eutrecht 40E and a 37BY, again, both good spark plugs, but the difference in reach. And what we're really looking for in our spark plugs is we want to operate them so that we're above the self-cleaning temperature, but below pre-ignition, which would be bad for our engines. Here you can look at what a lean, what a rich, and what an optimal spark plug should look like when you pull it out. So you can look at your own spark plugs when you pull them out and see. Again, we'll visit the football. If it gets too oval, it's not going to be good as a spark plug anymore. And here we are using an ohmmeter to measure the internal resistance of the resistor in the spark plug. And then finally, the fire wire plugs. We hear a lot about them, but here's what they look like. Not difficult at all to understand when you see them outside of the cylinder. So I know this has been a lot to bite off and chew on when you think about a spark plug. You normally just think of it as a very simple item. So we hope we've shown you what all there is to a spark plug. We hope you found those useful and informative. Thanks for watching and have a great day flying your Grumman. And getting ready for our June event, we've had some new patches made for the organization featuring Grumman pilots. That's why you'll see it now on the video and these will be available at the June event along with a bunch of new t-shirts. Look forward to seeing you all then. And in addition, there's a little treat about 3 o'clock in the morning when I'm doing web work and other stuff. Here's my cat coming down, playing with a mouse and meowing and just having a good time with me in the wee hours of the night. So I thought I'd throw this into you as a little treat. Y'all, please enjoy.